In this video, we're going to get started with the project setup. So my goal in this video is to provide a starting point so that we don't have to write basically all the code involved in building the chat room itself so that we can focus on Google Maps and all the stuff that's related to that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to my GitHub. It's uh, Mitch Tabian, so github.com slash Mitch Tabian. And the repository is Google Maps 2018. And um, I recommend getting the code from GitHub this way because it's going to be easy for you to switch between branches. So you want to go to clone or download, get the download link right here. I'm just going to copy that. And if you weren't clear on what I mean by switching between branches, so each, uh, each video in this course is going to be represented, the code will be represented as a different branch on GitHub. So it's going to make it very easy for you to complete a video, see what the code was like at the start of the video, and then see what the code was like at the end of the video. And if yet that's confusing to you, I'm going to show you what I mean in just a minute here. So yeah, get the, uh, get the download URL right here. I'm going to copy that. And now I'm going to open the new project. I, these are all the other projects I've had open recently, so just kind of ignore those. What you want to do is go to check out project from version control, click GitHub, and then here's where we're going to paste in our URL right here. So I'm pasting that, and now I'm just going to click clone. And now uh, Android Studio, so here you're going to dialog saying, do you want to open the project? I'm going to click yes. Now Android Studio is going to get started um, opening that project. Once the project is open in Android Studio, you should see something like this. The thing to notice here is that there's this X up here. So if I try to run the app, uh, I get something, an edit configuration box popping up. So that's that's not normal. So what you want to do is you want to go over to the log cat and you can see it's telling us that we need to configure the SDK. So I'm going to click configure. I'm going to cho choose build tools 27.0.3 because I'm using version, I'm targeting 27, version 27 for this project. And I'm going to click OK. So now that we have the SDK conf configured, you can see that that X is gone up here. And now if I click the play button, it looks for devices and I can actually try to run the application. So there we go, we have the devices that I have plugged in and I have a couple of virtual devices that I have on this machine. So I'm going to minimize the log cat. Now I wanna explain what I meant by all the branches for the course when I was on the GitHub page, um, how each video will have a starting version for the code and an ending version for the code. So, so now I can actually just click down here and these, these uh, so I'm recording the video and the, the course code isn't complete yet. So when you do this, there's gonna be more, more showing up, but this is kind of just the partial, um, partial code. You'll get the gist of what I'm saying. So for the first video, for example, that's the, the project startup. There's no code for that video. But the second video is going to be, um, which one is? Integrating Google Maps SDK. So you can see there's a starting version and there's an ending version. So this is what the code should look like at the start of the video. And this is what the code should look like at the end of the video. So if you want to get that code, you just click it, go check out as new local branch, click OK. And now you have all the code for that video. So all the code in Android Studio is updated. So that's what I meant by it's very easy to get the code for each video if you get the code this way. You can very easily just switch between branches, aka videos, and uh, if you ever get stuck, very easy to check your code. So this is going to provide you with that starting point that I talked about, but we're not finished because the chat, the chat rooms and the chat application itself, all that information is stored on Firebase, on Firebase Firestore. So in order for this to work for your project, you're gonna to need to configure the project to work with uh, your Firebase because it's not gonna work with my Firebase. It has to be configured to work with your Firebase. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to Firebase and configure this new project. So you're gonna to wanna to go to console.firebase.google.com and we need to create a new Firebase project to associate with this new Android project that we just opened. So to create a new Firebase project, you just go to add project. And actually, as you can see, I already have a Google Maps 2018 project. So I'm just gonna kinda of create a dummy project just to kinda of show you what you need to do. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is name yours Google Maps 2018 like I did right there. So um, what you're gonna be doing is typing Google Maps 2018 but what I'm gonna do is, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna call it uh, dummy project, just because I wanna show you how to do this. I'm gonna select this little uh, edit thing here. I'm gonna type my country, which is Canada, select a region, uh, so whatever region you're closest to. Uh, I'm gonna share some analytics data, sure, and I accept, and now I'm gonna create the project. So now we're just waiting, and uh, Firebase is creating our new project. Oh, so when it's ready, I can just click continue. And here is our new project. So 
to, to get started with this, we want to just basically follow the instructions. It says, get started by adding Firebase to your app. You can have an iOS, an Android, or a web version. We're Android, obviously. Here we want to type in the package. So that's com coding with Mitch dot Google Maps 2018. And if you're unsure of how to get that, you can always just open Android Studio and go to any of the uh, any of the files, really. And you can see there's the package right there. I'm just going to copy that. And you can just paste it in there. But that, that's that's the same thing. The nickname is just a nickname. You can add a SHA-1 certificate if you want. I'm not going to. Um, so I'm just going to click register app. So this is the most important part. Adding this Google services JSON file to your project is going to allow your project to communicate with Firebase. So what you want to do is uh, click download Google services.json. All right, so I'm going to click this and the Google services JSON file will start downloading. Now when it's done, we want to add it to the app folder like it says right here. So we have the project uh, view selected from the directory, the app folder is expanded, and then you can see the Google services JSON file is put into there. Um, so I'm gonna open up Android Studio here. Well, yeah, I'll open up Android Studio, and I'll kind of drag this over to the side because I'm gonna just kind of drag it in. So I'm gonna go to project, I'm gonna select the project view, expand this, expand app, and this is where we wanna put the Google services JSON file. So I'm just gonna click this, I'm dragging it up, and I'm going to drop it into the app folder and click OK. So that's what's going to allow your project to communicate with, with Firebase. So that's, that's kind of the most important part right there, like I explained a few minutes ago. Hopefully that window is sitting in the right spot. OK, so now that that's done, we're going to go next. And you can see we've got to add some dependencies now. So this one goes into the project level build.gradle file. So I'm going to copy that, open up Android Studio. And I've already done this ahead of time, but I just want to kind of go through the motions for you. So I'm expanding Gradle scripts. I'm back in the Android view up here, expanding the Gradle scripts, going to the build.gradle project file. You can see it says project right there. And um, you can see I already have it right here. So com, see I'm pasting it, same thing. So that's where you want to put that. And if you go to the next one now, these ones are going into the app level build.gradle file. So I'm going to copy this one first, the Firebase core one. Go to Android Studio, open the app file. But like I said, I've already put these in, so you can see there's the first one right there. And if we go back, this last one, com Google GMS Google Services, that one is also down here. So you can see it's it's below the dependencies uh, bracket right here. So that's that's pretty much all there is to it. At that point, you'd sync your project, but I'm not going to. Um, but then it's just going to verify that it can communicate with your project. I'm going to skip that step, but you're pretty much ready to go. So now your project is going to be able to communicate with Firebase, but we need to enable the tools that uh, we want to use. So the first tool is authentication. We're using authentication to register and log in new users for the chat application. So I'll click on authentication and we want to enable a sign up method. And I'm going to use email and password. I'm going to click enable click save. So that's good. People can now register with the app and also log in with the accounts that they register with. Next, we need to kind of set up the database. So go over to the database tab over on the left here. And the database we're going to use is Firestore. Firestore is currently in beta, but it is going to be Google has said that it's going to be the flagship database uh, for Firebase moving forward. Uh, the, the Firebase database is essentially deprecated and Firestore Cloud Firestore is replacing it. So I'm going to click create database. I'm going to click start in locked mode, sure. Okay, so now the database is set up. The Basically the only thing we need to do, first of all, is uh, implement some rules. So the only rule that I'm going to use is I'm going to allow anybody to read or write to the database as long as they're authenticated. So I'm going to say if read or write, or allow read or write if request.auth.uid um, does not equal null. So basically, if they if they if they're authenticated, they'll have a UID, so they they will be an authenticated user. I want to hit publish. That's that's all I want to do. Now you're essentially ready to go. So now I'm going to open up Android Studio and we're going to test it. I'm just going to close all this stuff and I'm going to run the app and make sure that it's able to register a new user. I'm able to log in with that new user and maybe create a chat room or something. So I'm just going to run it on my phone here. 
So here's the main screen of the application. This is the login screen. Uh, because this is a new new application, a new Firebase project, you're going to need to start by registering a new user. So I'm going to click on register and I'm going to enter my email, which is mitch at tabian.ca. Just use a password of password and confirm my password of password. And now I'm going to hit register. So now that's going to register a new user into the Firebase project. So now you can see I'm given access to the application. And if I go back to my Firebase console and I go to the authentication tab, you can see that I have Mitch at Tabian.ca is now registered. And if I go to the database, so as you can see here, there's a user's collection. There's the user ID of the user. Uh, we have the email, the user ID, and some basic kind of information here. So basically what the takeaway here is that it's working. So that's good. So let's go back to the application. Um, let's, I'm going to click the plus down here to create a chat room. I'm just going to call it first, hit create. And there we go, we have that first chat room. And you can see I'm automatically joined to the chat room. If I refresh this, it should show that chat room is, has been inserted into the database. So if I go to the chat rooms collection, there we have a chat room, uh, the title of it, the user list. If I then, let's see, if I add a message, so if I write, hey, I should see if I refresh this again, there should be some messages. Yeah, so there's the chat messages. And there's my message, hey, from the user Mitch Tabian and all that stuff. So basically, yeah, the takeaway here is that it is, it's working, so that's good. Now, before we actually move on to the, the new course content that is the Google Maps stuff, I wanna just kind of run through the source code really quick just to give you kind of a general overview of how I've structured things. So if we open up the app folder, open up the res folder, um, so I'll expand everything here. So how I've structured this, I've, I have a number of packages. We have the adapters package, the models package, the UI package, the util, the util or utility package, and then a couple other classes down here that aren't in it. They're just in the main package. Um, so all the adapters are just the recycle view adapters. You can see it's chat message, recycle view adapter, chat room, recycle view adapter, user recycle view adapter. So all, all recycle view adapters. The models are chat message, chat room, and user. Pretty. These are just plain old Java objects. So you can see if I click one open, they're just Java objects. The UI is where the bulk of the code is. So uh, chat room activity is the activity that opens when, when you go to a chat room. Login activity is the login activity, obviously. Main activity is what, where you're brought once you're logged in. Register activity is where you go to register, obviously. And then user list fragment is a, is a fragment that comes into view when you want to view all the users in a chat room. Um, util is just a, just a little check classes, just some convenience methods here. Constants is where we're going to keep uh, basically all the constants for the project. And then user client is a class that I'm going to use to create a singleton of a user object. But I'm going to talk more about that later in the course. So don't worry about that if you don't know what I'm talking about. But that's, um, that's generally the project structure. So this is kind of just um, the project setup video. Now you should have a starting point you have an application that you can create chat rooms, join chat rooms, leave chat messages, all that stuff. Now we're going to work on integrating Google Maps and all the new stuff, all the actual course content. So I'll see you in that next video.